Hello everyone, this is Gwydion, and today I'm going to show you how to use SoundShow, which is a soundboard program uh, for triggering clips that you own. You can also trigger Sirenscape clips, but I'll show you how to use this using your iPad as a remote controller, uh, kind of as a MIDI controller. So you'll need to download uh, a number of programs, and honestly, the only one you have to pay for that I'll show you is the Midipad 2, which is on your um, your iPad, and uh, you just need to pay $2.99 one-time fee for that. The others are donationware, so I would encourage you to uh, donate to them, but um, nothing is required. So SoundShow, I'll set, drop a link in the um, description below. But again, it's basically a soundboard program, which I'll show you, and you can download it for free. And then hopefully, again, I, I did donate to, to them because I think it's great software. You're also going to need a program or a, uh, a driver from uh, Tobias Erickson. I've used a couple things from him before, but what you're going to download from him is RTP MIDI, which is a driver that allows you to utilize MIDI connections between the iPad and your computer. You're gonna use a program called MIDI Key to Key, and this is where you're going to program how to use the keyboard shortcuts in SoundShow um, so that they trigger on your iPad with MIDI Pad 2. And then finally, um, MIDI Pad 2, let me go to the home page here. Um, so this is on the App Store, and again, this is $2.99. There are other programs that I think will work. I love the simplicity of this one. So let's start, um, I will open SoundPad, SoundShow, excuse me. So I've already configured it, I have my tracks, I don't wanna show that in this video, but what I'm gonna be doing is showing all these favorites are already loaded into memory. You can tell that, that they're a little bit lighter color than these down here, which are not loaded. So I'm gonna show you how to trigger these sounds directly from your iPad. Make sure that you have a couple things set under configuration. Um, I think I still have this. It should be in English, but you can you can see this. Make sure that launch sounds with keyboard is active. Um, under commands, make sure that you have your keyboard enabled when in background, because I want to be able to trigger these whether or not sound shows on top or whether it's in the background. Have that toggled. And I'm using tab as my shortcut. So you're gonna it's basically gonna be triggering if you hold down tab and F1 tab and F2. I don't use shift or some others because they're already being used and it, and it got confused. So this was the best for me. So download sound show, get that loaded up. Then you're going to go back, um, download the uh, RTP MIDI and get that installed. And it all straightforward on how you download that, obviously. Um, and then download MIDI key to key. This, use the, this uses on the PC of the Bonjour service. So I, I think it's installed by default already, but if not, make sure you have that. Um, and then you're going to want to, again, purchase and download MIDIPad 2. So once you do all of that, you're going to launch the RTP MIDI, which I already have a shortcut on my desktop. So let's launch that. And then you should see this might be a little bit hard to read. So it's shown my desktop. And you can see that I used to have a connection, but there, your current connection should show up in your directory here. So right now this is showing that I have nothing connected directly. So now what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna be a little bit, um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna show you, but I'm basically launching MIDI Pad 2 on my iPad. So it's connecting right now. Now, sometimes it takes a bit, but you can see as soon as I launched the uh, program, and again, it might take a little longer. I've noticed that sometimes it can take a minute. So don't panic if you don't see it. But now that's connected. Okay, so now I'm going to drag this to my other screen. Now let's launch um, MIDI Pad 2. Or MIDI, sorry, MIDI Key to Key. Okay. So a couple things in here. Um, I'm going to stop the log first. You're going to want to make sure that if this says select input device and output device, Set this to your computer. Okay, so this is my computer. And then channel listeners, I I've, have all these connected, although I think we're only using, actually we are using um, up to the 16 
and I'll show you that on uh, MIDI pad too. Then make sure that you click log to window because that is gonna show you as you trigger sounds on the MIDI key to key, it's going to show you what, they, uh, what the, the number of the MIDI number is. I don't know if I'm saying that quite right. So now what I need to do, if I click on start, it's listening. So I'm going to, and the easiest way to show you is I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So what I'm doing on my iPad, and I apologize, I don't have a fancy setup to, to separate screens, but I'm clicking on these pads. Okay, I've got them set up. And for each one of these, you can go into pad editor and type in the name. So like if you want to have the name of the sound, um, laugh, uh, uh, sword hit, whatever, you can change the color of the pad. Everything I'm doing is set to pad. And this here, you can't see it, but um, I've actually got the pad editor set to note. And there's a couple of different settings. There's program change, there's others. I'm using note. And then underneath note, you'll see channel, note, velocity, and then velocity sensitivity. I'm using um, channel, actually, um, I'm using channel one for the first one, two for the second one, three for the third one. And you just slide this toggle to change those. Okay, um, let's see if there's anything else. So you can change the number of rows and columns to have kind of as many as you want. Um, I don't use the latency reduction. It hasn't been an issue for me. And then you can set multiple pages. So if you want to have like, here's the page view. If you want to have a like for every one shot or campaign you're running, if you're using an RPG like me, you can have different pages and have the buttons configured separately. Okay. So let's go back to sound show. And um, I'm gonna show sounds in the background. And then, okay, so now we're here. Now I'm gonna click on, make sure you're not in the edit mode on your, on your iPad and mini pad too. And I'm gonna click on the first trigger and it shows here the, um, the number of the, the trigger. So it's 801, 200. So let me just look at that quickly. I think I changed the note. Um, so let me change that back. Because I think that actually does change my, give me one second. I think I want C4. Just trying to change this back to what it was. Yeah, apologies for the, almost there, I think. There we go. I'm gonna click done, let's click that, okay, good. I wanted to put that back because I already have this configured. So you can see here 803C100. And if you look at, you go into edit and I have all these triggers set up. So I'm going to go to 803C and edit. And so I've already put in here and I'll show you how to do this. My number 803C, the last two numbers don't, don't matter. Make sure this is active and you can, just type a key here, but if you're gonna do a multiple, like a, a tab or something, you have to write it in here, which is what I did. So I'm saying tab plus F1. So that's acting as if it's holding the tab key and then clicking F1. Okay, so that's already done. So that's why now when I hit the button on my keypad, it's already playing that growling, which um, I actually don't know. Yeah, I probably don't have that set to where you hear it at the moment. Um, I can do that. Give me one second. And I think I can make that to where you can hear it. Or maybe you are hearing it. Um, go down to here. There we go. Now you're hearing it. Okay. So let's set up a new key. So I've done keys up to um, key number uh, 8873. So I want to find one that's 883. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna trigger, so there's my 883C100 key. And the way I did that is going back to the MIDI key. Oh, sorry. Apologies, let's go back. So going back here, all I'm doing is I'm putting in the name I want, whatever color add here. This will say um, uh, note. So this should say note, and then your channel is gonna be eight. 
And then under for note and velocity, I don't, I would just leave them as default. I, you shouldn't have to change it. This will give you the ability to do 16 because there's 16 channels. So there might be other ways to do it, but I'm just using the channel um, functionality. So, okay. Sorry, I keep clicking around. All right. So you know this is 883, so we're going to go in and say new. We want this to be 883, and I'm going to put C00, because that's what is showing here as being triggered. And then I'm going to do tab plus, let's do, um, let's see, I've got all the way up to dark pit. I'm going to do, uh, I don't know, uh, riser B, so F9. So I'm going to just type in here F9. And you can name it. So I've been naming them, um, I think just, I forget what I'm saying, but I think I'm saying like MIDI pad um, uh, 9F9, something like that. I don't know. So it's successfully saved. Now I should see that MIDI pad, MIDI pad um, yeah, I could have just said MIDI pad F9, but so that should be set. So now, um, if I trigger that on my pad, I'm gonna make sure I'm done. I'm not, and make sure this is not clear. You have to have this active. I think you should be able to stop the logging, but let me, okay, there we go. Riser string. So I'm gonna change that name. You won't see it, but I'm gonna change that name on my iPad to just say riser B. B, done. And I'm gonna change the color, all right. So now that's all set on my iPad. Now you shouldn't have to, I don't believe, um, I think, I don't think you have to have this, and I think you can even have this stopped. No, you can't. Okay, that's good. Well, why isn't that one working? It was working. Yeah. Oh, huh. go back to edit. Actually, let's log it again. So I can see what that's showing, 883C. Now it's working again. I wonder if I need this. I don't know, maybe you leave this unlogged and maybe maybe it, maybe it does need to be listening. So make sure this um, is not stopped. It's working now. If I stop it, maybe it doesn't work. And you can minimize this. So now once this is all set up and I've got my iPad, you should be able to minimize this and I should be able to pull it even to another string or, or screen, I mean, or put it below some other pages. Like here's the MIDI key to key page. But if I hit a creaky door, it should still play. And it looks like it is. So that is, I'm trying to think if that's really it. Um, again, you could do as many pages as you want. Maybe you can change the channel and programs to get more triggers, but I think in my games, I'm just going to use it to, to trigger um, uh, one shots. So I'm only triggering these favorites up here because in sound show, I'm setting these up to where I'm not loading all these to, to so I can save some memory. So I can't trigger these, I don't believe, without them being loaded. So for now, I'm just triggering these F keys. So I think you can add more to them, certainly. Or maybe it's, I guess, I guess 12 would make sense. I don't think I need more than 12, so 12 channels is, is fine for me. So that's, that's really it. So again, remember, make sure that when you're pulling up the RTP MIDI, make sure you see this green and the connection. And if not, you know, make sure you pull up the MIDI, uh, MIDI pad 2 on your iPad. Make sure you see the connection. And again, latency to me is very responsive, so it doesn't seem that bad. So that's it. Um, quick video, relatively quick. I hope that's helpful and allows you to use SoundShow to trigger uh, clips uh, directly from your iPad or your iPhone if you want. See everybody next time. Thank you.